Did Busch Gardens and SeaWorld make the right decision in choosing to delay all of their new roller coasters for a full year? Did Universal make the right call in deciding to confirm to everyone that Epic Universe would open in summer of 2025? Timing can be everything in the theme park business, just like with any business or creative endeavor. Talk about this issue in my newspaper column a little bit this week, but I also want to talk about this here. Let's start with the Busch Garden SeaWorld roller coasters. Um, you know, a lot of other uh, theme parks, when they had to close in 2020, decided to just kind of work double time, make sure they had all their new attractions ready to go when the parks opened or shortly thereafter. Uh, SeaWorld parks didn't. They, uh, they decided to slow walk everything. They uh, had four new coasters just pretty much ready to go, needing just a few little, uh, you know, cosmetic things, station work, that sort of stuff. And they didn't open them. They waited until 2022, and they're in the process of opening right now. So Icebreaker has opened in uh, previews uh, at uh, SeaWorld in Orlando. We're about to get Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens in Tampa Bay, and then after that we're going to get Emperor at SeaWorld San Diego, and uh, then finally Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. If uh, the SeaWorld management was hoping that by waiting to 2022 they would get past the pandemic and we'd be all over that and you know everyone would be super excited about visiting theme parks again uh, they kind of missed <laughs> just goes to show that you cannot control what's happening out there in the world um, fortunately you know omicron has got us up at uh, or has had us up at uh, record case counts across the country lots of hospitalizations a lot of people saying you know maybe now's not the time uh, to be heading out to, uh, you know, theme park attractions, especially that's kind of a feeling in, uh, you know, some parts of the country. Not all, but some. And, uh, you know, hey, maybe that didn't work out so much. But let's face it, I mean, uh, February, March, these were going to be shoulder seasons for SeaWorld and Bush Gardens anyway. Uh, these parks weren't, uh, these coasters weren't held this year for, you know, the late winter or spring. They were held this year for the big summer season. And, you know, things could still work out for uh, SeaWorld and Busch Gardens on that count. When you look around, it is not a real deep lineup of new attractions planned for this summer at theme parks around the country. I mean, if uh, Disney World holds off on uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind roller coaster until the fall, at least for an official opening, when uh, Epcot celebrates its 40th anniversary on October 1st, uh, there's not a whole lot to compete with here, and it could be a uh, you know, pretty wide open summer for the Busch Gardens and SeaWorld parks to enjoy promoting uh, their new coasters to an eager audience. So, I mean, I'd really love to hear uh, in the comments or shoot me an email or uh, just let me know what you think about their decision, whether that was a wise one or not. Uh, now, on the flip side, let's uh, go take a look over at Universal Orlando. You know, they took very much the opposite approach uh, during the pandemic with their attraction development. Uh, they went full speed ahead. They went ahead and premiered that Jason Bourne stunt show in Universal Studios Florida when those, just right after the parks opened in June 2020. I mean, way back then, we didn't have vaccines back then. All we had was testing, masks, and social distancing. And you can't social distance performers in a fight scene in a stunt show. But, uh, I mean, Universal went ahead with the testing, with the masking. They found a way to make it work. They got the Born Stuntacular open in 2020. Uh, they did not slow down at all, literally or figuratively, with um, uh, Jurassic World Velocicoaster, which opened this past summer, 2021, at Universal Orlando's Islands of Adventure, swept all of the awards for Best New Attraction of the Year, including our own Theme Park Insider Award for, for that category. Um, big couple of years, I think, for Universal Orlando as a result. And now, uh, parent company Comcast has announced that that Epic Universe theme park that they're building down by the Orange County Convention Center, uh, they had delayed it um, when uh, the pandemic hit, but then they brought it back last year, and uh, they've announced they're going ahead with the development, and uh, they're planning on having it open by summer of 2025. Now, this is really unusual to hear an opening date that far in advance from Universal. Remember, this is the park that got absolutely torched after they opened, they announced the opening of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter uh, back in, uh, you know, early 2000s. 
and everyone just checked out and said, okay, you know, we'll just wait for that to open before we book a visit. Their attendance tanked for two years. Now, granted, you know, the, the, the recession did not help things, but uh, their attendance was way down. Now it all came back huge once Harry Potter opened. They were the fastest growing theme parks in the country then. But uh, ever since then, Universal has been really coy about uh, uh, announcing opening dates. I mean, it's been a joke that uh, Universal will announce the opening date of a new attraction on its third anniversary. And they, they went forever without telling us anything about Kong. Uh, the uh, Super Nintendo world is under construction now in the lower lot, Universal Studios Hollywood, well along with that construction. They haven't said a thing about when they're going to open that. But... They're going to do Epic Universe in 2025. Now, granted, this was a response to an investor analyst asking on their investor call. Uh, wasn't something they could exactly get out of uh, you know, saying. I mean, investors want to know when things are happening. It's pretty much widely known within people following the construction community in Central Florida that we were looking at a 2025 opening. We talked about that on Theme Park Insider. Um, so, you know, certainly wasn't a big surprise, but, you know, that got out into the news. Lots of headlines going out to the general public, not necessarily theme park fans. Uh, it's going to be 2025. Uh, is that going to hurt Universal Orlando's attendance? Are people going to hold off on visiting the way that they did before the original Wizarding World of Harry Potter opened at Islands of Adventure in 2010? Uh, honestly, I don't think that, that, people really plan their visits quite that way. I think if Universal had a really strong lineup of new stuff hitting those parks in the next couple of years, 2022, 2023, 2024, people would still be coming out. The trouble is they don't. Um, they opened Bourne. They opened Velocicoaster. The only other project they've got is whatever you know, this Minions thing is that's going to be replacing Shrek 4D, and, and we're really looking at kind of a walkthrough attraction there. I don't know that that is the blockbuster that is going to keep their attendance growing strongly, particularly while Disney World down the street has got Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind opening uh, sometime this year, that indoor story coaster, the first reverse launch on a Disney uh, uh, roller coaster. Um, that's going to be a big deal for them. And then after that, we're going to have uh, the Tron Light Cycle run over at Magic Kingdom, uh, which has been a widely acclaimed coaster over at Shanghai Disneyland, where it was originally installed. So big competition there. You know, SeaWorld's got Icebreaker this year. They're going heavy into thrill rides and roller coasters. I would not be surprised to see them do more, particularly if that um, Cedar Fair deal doesn't come through and they've got uh, cash to spend on on their own expansion. Uh, so yeah, again, did uh, Universal make the right move in committing to an opening date for Epic Universe? Were their hands tied because they had to make disclosures to Wall Street? Is it a smart PR move? Love to hear what you thought about it. I mean, uh, personally, I think uh, the problem isn't the announcement about Epic Universe. The problem is that the cupboard's a little bare at Universal Orlando for the next couple of years. Um, but let's talk about uh, that, that SeaWorld situation, particularly uh, them trying to buy out uh, Cedar Fair that we talked about yesterday. Got a great question from a reader, um, and you know, I love questions. Hit me up at uh, themeparkinsider at gmail.com with uh, any questions that you might have for me, and uh, I'll answer them here for you. Uh, reader asked, do you think Cedar Fair could come back with kind of a counter proposal and offer to sell some of its parks to SeaWorld sea parks rather than the whole thing? Uh, I think that's a great question. At this point, hey, anything's on the table here. This was an unsolicited bid. Um, it's not like uh, you know, Cedar Fair was asking for this. Uh, if the two parties want to negotiate something, hey, you know, certainly they can. I think a huge question to ask, even if this deal were to go through for the entirety of Cedar Fair, is would SeaWorld hold on to all those Cedar Fair parks? Would they sell some? Would they close some? Uh, you know, what are they going to have to do to make that deal happen? Uh, so if you know, Cedar Fair doesn't want some parks uh, and SeaWorld wants to have maybe a more manageable financial deal, I, mean, I don't know what parks it is SeaWorld really wants to get their hands on. I know talking to SeaWorld, longtime SeaWorld people, um, you know, for decades, they long considered themselves kind of tier two, uh, one notch below Disney, but 
only one notch below Disney. They saw their, um, their com main competitor parks being Universal as uh, their company in uh, tier two behind uh, Disney. Now, obviously, Universal has stepped up uh, over the last decade or so. Uh, SeaWorld, frankly, has slipped a bit. I do think that they are kind of in the mix with the Cedar Fair parks at this point. I think for a long time, the only Cedar Fair park that SeaWorld really saw as um, on their level was Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, so, but, you know, do they really need Knott's Berry Farm? I, that gets them into the L.A. area, but they're already in San Diego, which is Southern California. Um, I think they more likely want to get into the Midwest, where they used to be with uh, their original, uh, not actually the second SeaWorld Park, uh, SeaWorld Ohio, which was uh, built across from Geauga Lake, and Cedar Fair actually got a hold of that property at one point. Uh, so there's been some there's been some financial transactions between these companies in the past. Also, you know, right here in Southern California, where I'm coming from, uh, the old Knott's Soak City Park down in Chula Vista, that went to SeaWorld and became Aquatic, uh, is now becoming uh, Sesame Place, the first Sesame Place on the West Coast. So, uh, you know, they've all got their numbers on speed on you know in their on speed dial. Phew, dating myself with that reference, but uh, they're in their they're in their address books. Um, uh, they know how to get a hold of each other if they want to do something creative with a deal, uh, rather than just uh, completely walk away from this thing. I think they absolutely will come up with something. Uh, so that's a great question from a reader. Again, uh, I'd love to hear what kind of questions you have about things. Again, so many questions about timing. When is the timing right to make a deal? When is the timing right to open an attraction? When is the timing right to make an announcement? A lot of news to cover, and of course, we'll be covering it for you here on Theme Park Insider on the website and here on video as well. Uh, wrapping up here with the ticket deal of the day. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Disneyland Resort, which is offering a Southern California resident deal. We've got that deal on our website. If you go uh, to ThemeParkInsider.com, go to that Buy Tickets link and look for the link to Disneyland Resort. We've actually got that deal at a lower price than Disneyland is offering on its own website. It's about uh, six, a little under $63 a day that you could get into the Disneyland, Disney California theme parks for three days. Um, by taking advantage of that uh, ticket deal. And of course, there are a ton of other ticket deals for other theme parks around the country. Again, if you just follow that buy tickets link on themeparkinsider.com. So again, uh, thanks so much for, wander for, uh, for watching and uh, we'll keep up with all the theme park news for you.